Welcome to KJV Cafe, where we explore great truths from God's holy word in a simple, down-to-earth fashion. Romans 10:17 shows us where faith comes from. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's grow our faith together in the cafe today. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. Grab your Bible and a hot cup of coffee or tea and join us now as we explore God's holy word. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for joining me. Good to be on the program today. I hope you're having a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Welcome to KJV Cafe. Today we are diving right back into God's word as we always do. And we're discussing the lost and the saved. Who are you serving today? We are looking at the fruit of salvation, how we are to live and what we are to do. Romans 6, 6 through 7, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. And that's Paul writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Romans 6. And it's interesting, Romans 6, 6, number of man, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, who's him, that's Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Can I ask you a question today? If you are unsaved, if you've never been saved, are you serving sin? The answer is yes. That's all you would know how to do. A sinner is going to sin. You're born a sinner. It would make God uh, a liar or uh, he would be contradicting himself if he were to say, oh, you're born in sin, but you don't sin. Oh, you're born in sin, but you don't serve sin. Romans 6, 6 tells us that the old man before he is saved is serving sin. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. So that means that when we are saved, that body of sin is destroyed. That henceforth, we should not serve sin. That means that once we're saved, we should not serve sin. Now, how come Paul didn't write, you can't serve sin? Or you won't serve sin. Why did Paul write, should not serve sin? Because we have free will. We are still in this flesh. And after we're saved, the blinders are taken off. We have discernment. We have the Holy Spirit living within us. So we have God living within us. We have a a third of the Holy Trinity inside of us. Amen. Well, that's a glorious picture to paint. Amen. We we, We want to know where God is. Hey, he's inside of you. If you've been saved, amen. That's where God is. He's living within you. And that, that, that Holy Spirit's called the Comforter. And it's a great blessing to have the Comforter. And oh, in these last days, oh, in these perilous times, in the times of the pandemic and the wickedness and the all manner of trials, have I gone to the Comforter? And the Comforter has provided that, that love and that peace that surpasses all understanding. So we have the Spirit living within us. But even the Spirit can't stop you from sinning because we have free will. We have free will. We can make a choice. I'm a pastor of a church, and I preach on the radio. And if I so chose, I could walk into a bank and rob it, right? Now, God, I'm sure, would be convicting me not to do that. He may even throw some supernatural things in my way, like a tree in the road or something, to make sure that I'm really thinking about what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, it's not going to stop me. And the reason why, and again, I can't speak for God uh, in that regard, but I'm uh, believing he wouldn't stop me. The reason why is because I have free will. And so I have to exercise that free will. And so this message really is for the saved person that may not be living fully for God. Verse 7 of Romans 6, and 7, the number of completion, a beautiful number in the Bible For he that is dead is freed from sin. So we see in Romans 6, 6, the number of man, that sin should be crucified with him, him being Christ, the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we would not serve sin, or as the Bible says, we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. That's verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. We should no longer be under the bondage of sin. But many people will put themselves back under the bondage of sin. And the reason why they'll do that is they may be well-meaning, but they are just living in this world and everybody in the office is going to happy hour. Or I'll just go too. And I know the Bible says to be of a sober mind, but I won't be. Or I know the Bible says not to gossip, but I won't 
I won't uh, engage in too much gossip, just a little bit. Or I'll be over here living uh, uh, with my girlfriend when I know that that's not right because I'm in, engaging in fornication and, and that is against God's will and his plan uh, for, for a sacred marriage, amen, and keeping yourself pure. But I'll just do it because it's on Instagram, it's on TV, it's everywhere. Why not? And the Bible says, here's why not, because you should not be living in sin because you should be dead to sin. Because when you were saved, it's like you were there with Christ and you were crucified with him on that cross and you were buried and you were risen again to new life. That's the idea of that um, submersion when you're baptized, believer's baptism, and you go under the water and you come back up, you're a new creature in Christ. And the old things, Paul writes, are passed away. So are you for ready to forsake your worldly life? You know, this is not easy. It wasn't easy for Paul, I don't think. In Philippians 3, we're going to read a little bit here. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Think, what, think about what Paul's doing here in Philippians 3. He's saying, look, you're in the flesh, you've been in the flesh, so have I. He's saying he was absolutely uh, circumcised the eighth day as the law had asked him to do, or his parents to do. He was an, uh, a Jew, he was an Israelite, he was of the tribe of Benjamin, and he could actually trace his lineage back to the tribe. He says he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, he was a Pharisee, we understand that he was trained in uh, under the Sanhedrin there, which is like the Supreme Court. Uh, he was uh, very zealous. He persecuted the church. Uh, he was blameless as he was uh, executing that persecution as he understood the law to be. He is basically a, a fully 100% worldly individual in the sense that he was living in the world following what he thought to be the correct path. And that is what many people are doing. And then look at verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. So all his status, all his prestige, all his wealth and riches, all his power, he counted lost for Christ. And then verse 8. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Wow. So Paul is saying all of this prestige he had, all of these worldly accolades, all this honor, all this power is all gone. He has nothing. Nothing of worldly um, meaning. If someone from the world saw him, they'd say, oh, you've really gone downhill. Oh, you don't have anything. Oh, look at you. But Paul was saying here, he counts it all as manure, as a absolute uh, a reproach because of what the knowledge of Christ, that excellency. I count all things, but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them, but dung that I may win Christ. Look, if we want to be in love with the Lord and we want to serve the Lord with our whole heart, we need to get rid of the things of the world. We need to understand we are trading worthless things. They may look like they're worth something, but they're worthless for something that is priceless, and that is Christ. Are you ready to forsake your worldly life? Would you be ready to burn up those degrees or that job title or that status or whatever it is that makes you somebody in this world? I always think of how Jesus mentions that the least of these will be the greatest in heaven. I know people that are the least of these. I know people that have no worldly value in the sense of they have no money, they have no skills, they don't have much education, uh, they can't do much for themselves. And something tells me they'll have great riches in heaven because they love the Lord. And in their way, they may serve the Lord. Amen. You understand that when we forsake this world and the things that are of this world, we stop trying to impress the people of this world 
then we will have the love of Christ reigning in us. We'll have that fullness of the Lord. Now, of course, this is after we're saved. We're not saved by works, amen? But after we're saved, we show God that we love him by our works. Jesus himself says in the New Testament, if you love me, keep my commandments, amen? I put it on a t-shirt. I put it on a coffee mug, okay? It's in the Bible. Look it up. And what do we see? People don't want to keep those commandments. They don't want to show Jesus they love him. They want to be one foot in, one, one foot out. They want to be lukewarm. And, and that makes God sick to be lukewarm. And so what we have to do is live for God with our whole hearts and our whole minds, our whole soul. We need to love the Lord. And that means we need to forsake the things of the world. It's very difficult. Even raising children now, we raise them to go to a good, prestigious college. Oh, how they could just go to college. And what is that college going to teach them? And then what is that degree going to signify about them? You know, we should be raising our kids to go to the mission field. We should be raising our kids to go into the ministry. We should be raising our kids to understand this scripture right here, to forsake the things of the world. Because number one, why are we doing that? Why are we thinking that, oh, okay, they're going to go to college, get a good degree, and they'll go get a good job with that good degree, and they'll have money, and that should be enough. That is the worst logic ever because they're going to get brainwashed in college. They're going to have that degree and think higher the, of themselves than they should. And then they're going to go get a job and they're going to have money and they're still going to have all kinds of problems and be in this world. And so I'm not against college. I, I have several degrees and I've had to ask myself, do I count them as dung? And that's, that steps on my toes. But I do, truly I do. I love the Lord here today. And if you're listening, heck, if you've gotten this far in the message, I imagine you do too. And so I'm just encouraging you today to, to give it to Christ, to stop looking, stop coveting at the things of this world, the things that other people have, and fall in love with Jesus and look at how he lived his life. And look at what Paul is saying here. Paul was brilliant. He was like a triple PhD, as I understand it. He was absolutely brilliant. He had power and he prestige. He had all these things and he was, he was a cut above almost anyone else. And he said, all of this, I'm going to count it as dung. I'm going to count it as nothing but refuse. I'm going to get rid of it because the truth is it is meaningless and it's meaningless in the body of Christ. Show me a proud person. and I'll show you somebody that can't get close to God. Pride is an abomination to God. Pride is what made the devil fall from heaven. Pride is the father of all sins, as they say. And so what we need to do is get pride and all those things that fuel our pride out of the way and, and bring in humility and Christ-like love and, and, and that understanding that, you know what, to be popular in this world means nothing. But to have the love of God upon you, to have that, that, that sincere closeness with God, and to have that ability to repent to God without holding anything back is priceless. And we're talking about the scope of eternity. And so in this life, what will these worldly things do for you? Make you, you know, give you an advantage for 10 years, 15 years, 5 years? What does it matter? It's nothing in the scope of endless years, of millions and millions and millions of years. We'll have peace with our Savior. As I understand it, this is our only time to live in this world as people that are flawed, that are in the flesh. And so now, as a way to show the Lord we love him, we can get rid of these things that hold us down and depart from that sin and be a new creature in Christ and live for him with our whole hearts. We can do that. That's a way that we can show God we love him by living for him and not for the world, by departing from sin. And then as others see that, maybe they'll be inspired and they'll do it too, especially your kids. Amen. I thank you so much for listening. Take care. God bless and amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of KJV Cafe. Have a question for Pastor Clark? Email him directly at clark at enduringpromise.org or visit kjvcafe.com and click the envelope button on the homepage. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. We'll close today with Psalm 119 verses 166 through 168. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee.